Welcome to channel don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. This time we're diving deep into the world of telecommunications, specifically SS7, a system behind every phone call you make. SS7 is crucial for call routing and connecting people across different networks, but there's a catch SS7 has vulnerabilities that could allow someone to eavesdrop on your calls. In this video, we'll break down how that's done step by step. This is purely for educational purposes, so you can understand the tech behind it and how to stay safe. Before we get into how someone could listen in on your calls, it's important to understand the underlying technology that makes these calls possible. We need to understand what SS7 is and how it works. SS7 or signaling system number seven is a set of protocols used to manage and route phone calls and text messages across different networks. Think of SS7 as the glue that holds all the different phone networks together, ensuring they can communicate with each other seamlessly. When you call your friend across the country, SS7 makes that connection happen seamlessly, routing your call through various networks until it reaches its destination. It handles not just routing calls, but also setting up call forwarding, sending text messages, and even managing roaming between different networks. Developed in the 1970s, SS7 wasn't designed with today's security concerns in mind. Back then, the focus was on creating a robust and efficient system, not on cybersecurity. One of the biggest issues is that SS7 relies on trust between networks. This trust was easier to maintain when fewer networks existed and they were all well-known entities. However, this trust can be exploited by attackers who gain access to the network, allowing them to intercept calls and messages. While SS7 itself isn't inherently insecure, its implementation and reliance on trust create opportunities for attackers to exploit vulnerabilities. And that's what we're going to explore next. We'll dive into how these vulnerabilities can be exploited and what measures can be taken to protect against such attacks. Now that we understand SS7, let's delve deeper into its intricacies and the potential threats it poses. SS7, or signaling system number seven, is a set of protocols used to manage the setup and teardown of telephone calls, as well as other services like SMS and number translation. However, its vulnerabilities can be exploited by malicious actors to eavesdrop on calls. SS7 attacks target the network itself, not the, the phone. This means that even the most secure phone can be compromised if the network is vulnerable. One common method is a man-in-the-middle attack, where the attacker intercepts communication between your phone and the network. This allows them to listen in on your conversations without your knowledge. Attackers could listen in on your calls or reroute them without you knowing. This can lead to sensitive information being leaked or even used against you. Another technique involves manipulating SS7 messages used for legitimate purposes like call forwarding or location tracking. By sending fake messages, attackers can trick the network into forwarding your calls to a number they control. Attackers can send a message pretending to be your phone and request call forwarding to a number they control. This effectively gives them access to your conversations and any sensitive information you might share. This gives them access to your conversations allowing them to record or even manipulate the information being exchanged. Carrying out these attacks requires a good understanding of SS7, specialized tools, and network access. It's not something that can be done easily, but for those with the right skills, it can be a powerful tool. These vulnerabilities exist and have been exploited in the past. High-profile cases have shown just how dangerous these attacks can be, affecting individuals and organizations alike. It's crucial to be aware of the risks. Understanding how these attacks work is the first step in protecting yourself and your information. So, let's take steps to protect ourselves. Regularly update your phone's software, use encrypted communication apps, and be cautious of any suspicious activity on your phone. By staying informed and vigilant, we can mitigate the risks posed by SS7 vulnerabilities. You're probably curious about the tools needed for an SS7 attack. First, you need access to a network that can send SS7 messages. This could be a legitimate mobile network operator or a less scrupulous provider. Then you'll need specialized software to interact with the SS7 network. These tools allow attackers to send and receive SS7 messages and manipulate network data. 
Some tools are commercially available, while others are shared within underground hacking communities. Using these tools for illegal activities is illegal. As security researchers, we need to understand these threats to develop better protections. Let's dive into the technical setup. I can't show you how to exploit SS7 vulnerabilities, but I can walk you through a simulated environment for safe experimentation. One approach is using a virtual machine running Kali Linux, which comes pre-loaded with security tools. Next, set up a virtual network to simulate a mobile network environment. This involves configuring virtual network interfaces and routing tables. Once your virtual network is running, install and configure the necessary SS7 software. This typically involves setting up an SS7 stack for communication. This is a simplified overview for educational purposes only. Here's where things get interesting. Intercepting calls using SS7 vulnerabilities. SS7, or Signaling System Number 7, is a set of protocols used to ensure that different parts of the phone network can communicate with each other. While it was designed to be a bridge for seamless communication, it has some serious security flaws. Attackers can use SS7 messages to trick the network into thinking they're a legitimate party to a call. This means they can intercept calls and messages without either party knowing. They exploit these vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access to the network. For example, they could request that all incoming calls be forwarded to their number. This is done by sending a specific SS7 message to the network, which then reroutes the call. Any calls made to your number would be routed to the attacker's device, allowing them to listen in. This kind of eavesdropping can be incredibly invasive and dangerous. Neither you nor the person you're talking to would know your call was intercepted. The attacker can listen to the entire conversation without leaving any trace. Another technique involves exploiting SS7 to obtain a phone's location. By sending specific SS7 messages, attackers can query the network for the phone's location data. Attackers can triangulate a phone's location based on its proximity to cell towers. This allows them to pinpoint the exact location of the phone, often within a few meters. This information can be used for tracking or planning targeted attacks. Whether for surveillance, stalking or other malicious activities, the misuse of SS7 vulnerabilities poses a significant threat to privacy and security. Let's say someone managed to intercept a call using SS7 vulnerabilities. They'd have a bunch of data, but it wouldn't be useful unless they could make sense of it. The first step is to isolate the relevant data. SS7 handles a ton of traffic, so attackers need to sift through it to find the specific call. This involves analyzing timestamps, phone numbers, and other identifying information. Once they've found the right data, they need to decode it. Call data is usually encrypted or encoded to protect privacy. With enough time, resources and expertise, attackers can extract meaningful information from intercepted call data. We've talked about the technical aspects of SS7 vulnerabilities, but it's important to address the legal and ethical implications. Exploiting SS7 for eavesdropping or other malicious activities is illegal in most countries. Governments are taking SS7 vulnerabilities seriously and prosecuting those who exploit them. Beyond legal ramifications, there's a huge ethical dimension. Spying on private conversations is a massive invasion of privacy and a violation of human rights. As technology advances, we must use it responsibly and ethically, understand the potential consequences of our actions, and always err on the side of caution. Has SS7 actually been exploited in the real world? Unfortunately, yes. There have been high-profile cases where SS7 vulnerabilities were used for eavesdropping and other malicious activities. One well-known example involved hackers remotely tracking cell phone users and intercepting their calls. Another case showed how SS7 vulnerabilities could bypass two-factor authentication by intercepting SMS messages. These examples highlight the real-world impact of SS7 vulnerabilities. As our reliance on mobile devices grows, it's crucial to be aware of these threats and protect ourselves. We've talked about the risks of SS7 vulnerabilities, but there are steps you can take to protect yourself. Use encrypted messaging apps like Signal or WhatsApp, which use end-to-end -end encryption. 
This makes it difficult for attackers to intercept and read your messages. Be aware of the permissions you grant to apps on your phone. Only install apps from trusted sources and be mindful of permissions. Keep your phone's software up to date as updates often include security patches. By implementing these strategies, you can reduce your risk of becoming a victim. Stay informed and stay secure. We've covered a lot in this video from SS7's technical intricacies to its real-world implications. SS7 is a legacy system designed in a different era with inherent weaknesses. The telecommunications industry is aware of these vulnerabilities and is working to address them. New protocols and security measures are being developed to enhance mobile network security. In the meantime, be aware of the risks and take steps to protect yourself. Use encrypted messaging apps, be mindful of app permissions and keep your devices updated. And that's a wrap. Hopefully this deep dive into SS7 and its vulnerabilities has been eye-opening. Remember this information is for educational purposes only. If you found this video insightful, hit that like button and subscribe for more tech deep dives. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this one. Your feedback helps a ton. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed and stay secure. Peace.